Apple's iPhone XS Max may be a small upgrade from last year's iPhone X, but it's a major upgrade if you're coming from any other iPhone. Apple went with a radical redesign last year, the biggest change ever to an iPhone, and this year it's all about refining that iPhone X with the iPhone XS. What's up guys, my name's Brandon and I've been using the iPhone XS Max as my daily driver for nearly three weeks now, and these are my thoughts. So the 6.5 inch iPhone XS Max is the biggest iPhone ever in terms of screen size, but since we have an edge to edge display, that massive screen is able to be crammed into a body that's only slightly smaller than the iPhone 8 Plus. If we look around the iPhone, you'll see that we have a seemingly identical profile to last year's iPhone 10, and it's just really hard to tell the difference between the iPhone 10 and the XS because the only thing that's really changed is the speaker holes on the bottom of the phones. The iPhone 10 has six speaker holes on the left and the right, while the iPhone 10s and the 10s Max have six on the right and three on the left. And the reason being is because, the, as you can see right there, there is an extra antenna band over to the left. And unfortunately, that is not the only extra antenna band on the iPhone 10s. There's also an additional band on the top right of the device, so it doesn't quite look as clean as the iPhone 10. But not many people are really going to notice that. All around the body, everything is the same. I mean, we have the same side button on the right side of the body. We have the volume rockers and the mute switch on the left side of the body. We have the same dual 12 megapixel camera setup on the back. Now the cameras have been improved on the iPhone XS and XS Max, and we're gonna talk about that in a few, but the look is exactly identical to the iPhone X. Now, of course, one difference in the iPhone X and XS is that you can now get it in the gold colorway. Pretty much the whole keynote this year was themed around gold, so that's really how you know it was a pretty small iPhone upgrade with the XS. It does still have a pinkish tint to it on the back, which I'm not really a huge fan of, but the edges are more of a true gold color and it just looks amazing. Now I said that I hate that pinkish tint, but that doesn't mean I hate the gold color as a whole. I mean, I really like the gold colorway, especially the edges, and it's not as pink as it was with the iPhone 8, but I do just wish that it was more of a true gold color on the actual back of the phone. Now when it comes to portability, I will say that the iPhone XS Max will fit in most pockets, but it will take up the full pocket on some shorts or jeans. As you can see, I do have some red shorts here and I love these shorts, but there is a caveat, they do have smaller pockets. And I will say with the iPhone XS Max, it's just not fun when I constantly have to worry about the phone falling out if I sit a certain way. Now it has fallen out of my pocket once in the car, but never out in public and it never really fell you know, onto the ground or anything like that. But this is one thing to consider when you're thinking about getting the XS or the XS Max. Because I will say that when the XS is in my pocket, I never have to worry about it falling out. But of course, that's something that you're gonna have to think about when you decide between getting a bigger phone and something like the XS, which is a smaller phone. So flipping it back around, the screen on the iPhone XS Max has a resolution of 2688 by 1242 and a pixel density of 458 pixels per inch, which is the same as the iPhone XS and also last year's iPhone X. Just the sheer size of the screen on the iPhone XS Max is impressive. And for anyone who thought that the screen on the X last year was a tad too small, you are going to love the iPhone XS Max. The screen is so big that I never really feel the need to go into landscape mode. Even when I'm watching videos, I mean, it is more enjoyable when I do go into landscape mode and watch videos, but I never feel like it's a necessity like I did on the iPhone 10. Now, if it's a full movie and I'm gonna be sitting there for like two hours watching it, of course I am going to go into landscape, but just for like YouTube and things like that, I can actually stand watching the videos in portrait. It's not so bad because the screen is so much wider and bigger. And even in Safari and things like that, the screen is just so big and just so wide that you just see more text, you just see more content than you do on something like the iPhone 10 or the 10s. These are just some of the reasons I feel like I need the biggest phone, like the 10s Max, like the 8 Plus, any of the plus size models. I just feel like I need the biggest one. I can see so much more content. I don't have to put my phone in landscape mode to watch videos. It's just great. Now, the only downside is that it is rather hard to reach the top of the iPhone XS Max to bring down things like the control center and the notification center. So it is a little bit annoying, but the good thing is that you do have reachability. So you can swipe down on the bottom bar to be able to reach app icons on the top, or like I said, the control center and the notification center. This is the first phone where I felt like reachability was an absolute necessity. So I definitely recommend if you do have an iPhone XS Max or if you're going to be getting an iPhone XS Max, definitely make sure to enable reachability inside of settings. Now on the flip side, the regular XS is also big enough. I mean, the display looks large like on the iPhone X and the fact that it's easier to handle with one hand will definitely make it more compelling to some users. Now me, I don't really mind using two hands with my iPhone, but those with smaller hands will probably think that the Max is just too big. Now we do still have the notch on the top of the screen, which
which Apple tries to hide so cleverly with their new wallpapers, but it doesn't really bother me near as much as it does the pretty much the rest of the internet. I mean, yeah, there are times when the text will get cut off or just can't see everything on the screen, but that's an app compatibility issue. It's not really on Apple here. So yeah, the notch, not really a huge deal to me at all. When it comes to the camera on the iPhone XS Max, this is where I finally felt like I had a newer generation iPhone, since of course I did come from the iPhone X before this. The camera setup is the exact same as the iPhone X, like I mentioned earlier. However, there are two major differences. We have a brand new sensor in the rear facing camera, and we also have a new software feature called Smart HDR. So the bigger sensor in the rear camera results in a 50% improvement in gathering light. So this is huge because the iPhone X wasn't that great when taking low light photo and video. And if you pair that with the new Smart HDR feature, you have quite possibly the best camera on the market right now. And basically what Smart HDR does is that it allows the iPhone to capture multiple exposures in a short amount of time for a well-balanced shot. It's able to capture more exposures in a shorter amount of time, which reduces shutter lag to the point where you basically won't even notice it. The iPhone XS and XS Max also give you the ability to adjust the depth of field on portrait photos after they've been taken. And I would say it works pretty well. I just wouldn't really do the most blurry setting. I wouldn't have it all the way down to like F1.4 because the software still blurs out parts of your hair. It's just not perfect yet. As far as video goes, we do have optic image stabilization, which is great. And we finally also have that on the front facing camera as well, which is awesome. The autofocus is extremely quick and I've only had something out of focus one time in a video, but all I had to do was tap on the screen and it focused immediately. Now, of course there is the whole beauty gate issue with the front facing camera, but I don't think it's near as big of a deal as people are making it out to be. I mean, yes, your face could look a little bit touched up, but you still see blemishes and things like that. And this could also be fixed in software. It's not really a hardware issue. This can be fixed in software, which Apple may actually do. But overall, the camera is a solid improvement over last year's iPhone 10, especially in low light situations and also in action shots with a moving subject. The improved stereo speakers are another nice, subtle addition to the iPhone 10s Max, and this is just something more to add to the already enjoyable video and moving watching experience on this gorgeous display. The sound quality and just overall loudness is one of those features that goes under the radar for most people, but it's nice when you can actually tell both a quality and loudness improvement like you can with the iPhone XS Max. Switching over to the battery life, the 3,174 milliamp hour battery in the iPhone XS Max is bigger than the battery in the XS and also the 10, but the difference in battery life is really nothing significant. Yes, you do get better battery life than the iPhone XS and the iPhone X of last year, but it's not a drastic improvement. Thanks to the battery and screen time settings in iOS 12, you can now see that I averaged nearly six hours of screen on time, six to seven hours of screen on time, and about an hour of screen off time for a total of nearly seven to eight hours. And that's enough to get me through a day, but I likely would not be able to stretch that into two days. Like I said, the battery is good, but I would have liked to see at least a 4,000 milliamp hour battery like we have over on the Note 9. Maybe we'll get that next year. Please, Apple. Inside the iPhone XS Max, we have Apple's new A12 Bionic chip, and the day-to-day -day performance isn't that much better than last year's iPhone X, but it is still fast, and some of this has to do with the optimization in iOS 12. Going in and out of applications is lightning quick. Also, apps don't really reload that often thanks to the four gigabytes of RAM alongside that A12 chip, and playing games on this is very, very enjoyable. I've played PUBG, Fortnite, Asphalt 9, and just many other games without any issue whatsoever. No stutter, no lag anything. Everything just runs flawlessly. I did also do a speed test comparing the iPhone XS Max to the Note 9, the iPhone 7, and the iPhone 6. So definitely check those videos out for a more in-depth look at the speed on this guy. Face ID also got a minor improvement on the iPhone XS Max thanks to the new Neural Engine on the A12 chip. And I do notice that it is more accurate and quick with unlocking via Face ID. It's not a drastic change, but I can tell that it's quicker and more accurate. Now, one question I get all the time is, do you miss the home button? And for that, I have to say sometimes, but at the same time, I do much prefer the gestures instead of the button. I'm just so used to the gestures on the iPhone 10 that I could really never go back to having a physical home button. The iPhone XS starts at $999 and the iPhone XS Max starts at $1099. And while there are still people who refuse to pay $1,000 for a smartphone, the truth is flagship smartphones are gonna be over $1,000 for the foreseeable future. So I say you should stop complaining about it. Aside from no fast charging cable being included in the box and those additional antenna bands, there's really nothing negative to say say about the iPhone XS Max. It's an improved version of the iPhone X, which was already near perfect when it was released last year. Now, if you're wondering about upgrading, these subtle changes and improvements that were added are definitely necessary enough to consider upgrading from an iPhone 8 or 8 Plus, 
but I would not upgrade if you do have an iPhone 10 right now. Only real reason I could see you updating from an iPhone 10 to a 10s or 10s Max is either if you want a bigger screen like you get on the 10s Max, or if you're a big camera nerd and you love taking pictures and video because the camera is a, a good bit better than it was on the iPhone 10. But if you're looking to upgrade from the 10 to the 10s or 10s Max strictly for speed, I would not do it. So anyways, guys, there you have it. That is my review of the iPhone 10s Max after nearly three weeks of usage. If you guys enjoyed this review, I would appreciate it if you gave it a thumbs up. Also, make sure to leave a comment down below with your thoughts on everything discussed in this video. And also let me know if you have an iPhone 10s or 10s Max and how you're enjoying it. Make sure you guys subscribe for a lot more video reviews coming soon. I will also be reviewing the iPhone 10R later on this month. So stay tuned for that video. But anyways, guys, thanks again for watching and I'll see you soon.